Hello everyone, welcome back to Let's Play Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous, where last time we helped defend the Hell Knights of the God Claw Order from uh, an entire squad or battalion or army or whatever of gargoyles. It was really tough. Um, <laughs> so tough that the developers had to make it so Reggie here, Regil, I call him Reggie, um, didn't die. Couldn't die, rather. So, I think that tells you all you need to know about that fight. Um, but we managed to do it, and now Reggie has joined us. He is a Hell Knight, but we are going to class him as a uh, fearsome leader, a, ca a cavalier. So now he has a mount and everything. Um, I didn't want to have two people with the same class build. That's why I'm not leveling him as a Hell Knight. But he is still he's still got a level in Hell Knight, so, you know, it is what it is. But we still have to pick his mythic path or his mythic ability here. So let's go ahead and take a look at what he can do here. Before we do that, though, let us take a look at his inventory here. So he uses a hooked hammer, a gnome hooked hammer, which looks like it's a two-handed weapon. Man, he looks cool. I want that armor. Can I take his armor? Ooh, I probably could. Is that better than my armor? That would give me... I think that is better. Yeah, that would give us one extra armor. We're not going to take his armor. It wouldn't fit us, right? Like, honestly. I'm pretty sure magical armor, like, fits to the user to wearer, but I don't know. I know in the game terms it wouldn't work. What? He still can't wear this? Oh. Did I not level him up all the way? No, he should be... So, only light barding. He gets medium bar barding at level 9. Wait. Where does he get medium barding at? Can I just... Is that a feat I can select for him? Maybe? But yeah, this horse is perceptive and stealthy. Unlike Zenith, who is mobile and athletic. Let's see here, so... Your feet. Oh, yeah. Armor proficiency. Medium barding. There we go. And let's just go to his inventory real quick and see if that worked. I wonder if I could have done that with, um... With, with Zenith. I wonder if Zenith can get that as a feat. So that increases its armor class by... Six, was it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, and you can see it there. Look at that. Who's a good horse? You are, Demon Bane. Okay, let's keep leveling him up. Uh, this is his... So, give him another point in con. So, yeah, we have two horses now. I do... I'm still thinking we might end up making him a beast rider. Just so he can have a different mount. But, uh... Not sure yet. I might look... Or just, like, um... Take a look at all the other classes and... Everything in between sessions. Just to see. But, uh, right now he's gonna be a fearsome leader. It makes sense for him to be a fearsome leader, I feel like. I feel like that's how he kind of leads his troops, is by fear. But I don't know how I like having two horses. I guess it makes sense. The horses are your typical mount. So so your weapon focus for this horse is going to be bite for him. We're going to get that. Because that's what he does, right? Yeah, bite. And that's his level up. Okay, so your mythic path or ability. Abundant casting, abundant smite. Always a chance. Archmage armor. Whenever you cast mage armor on yourself. No, ascendant element. No, ascendant summons. Battle meditation. As a standard action, you can enter a state of battle med meditation. While in this state, you are unable to move. All allies in a 30-foot radius gain a morale bonus to attack and damage rolls. 
That could be good for him. He's kind of like a, you know, as a commander sort of character. Best jokes. I don't think that's good for him. Brutal or brutality incarnate. The wounds you inflict. I keep. Stop doing that. Uh, with your natural attacks or anything but natural. Right. Cleaving shot. Uh, that's for the ranged weapon. Domain zealot. Elemental barrage. Enduring spells. Every time you damage an ally. No. Ever ready. Whenever you make an attack of opportunity, you get a bonus on your attack roll and damage roll. Equal to your mythic rank. And more attacks of opportunity. Exposed vulnerability. Every third hit with a ranged weapon. No. Inspirational leader. Your allies within 50 feet of you gain a bonus equal to half your mythic rank plus one to their initiative. Their saving throws against mind affecting effects and a concentration check. Is this like a constant thing? I might get that. You know, that's what he, he's, you know, he's a fearsome leader, but he also inspires them with his fear. Last stand. That could be not bad for him. Leading strikes always a good one, too. Mythic charge with the horse would be pretty good. Ooh, mythical beast. We got this for Zenith, didn't we? Your animal companion gains a bonus to its strength, exerting constitution equal to half your mythic rank plus one. Its attacks now ignore damage reduction. Oh, that's just such a good one to get when you have a, a compa an animal companion. That's hard to get anything but that. Hmm, but I think we're going to get something different than uh, what Sila got. We'll try to... Unless it's something like Abundant Casting, which is just such a good a good one to get. We might get Mythic Beast next time. Mythical Beast next time, I don't know. But I do want to get Inspirational Leader form. I think that'll be good. There we go. Now, does he need to cast that, or is that just a constant effect? It's not in his abilities here. So I guess it's just a constant effect now. Neat. Okay, so we need to head back to camp. Because we exhausted a lot of things there. Um, most of our healing is gone. Ember is uh, on death's door, so she needs a rest. Let's go to the area exit here. Uh, we'll take everything. Since we're going back to camp, we can just sell it. Okay, back to camp. Another seven hours. Uh, lower nature check succeeded. That's good. And let's go talk to Reggie. See what, uh, see what his story is. Uh, before we do that, let's just go ahead and rest. Oh, I forgot we had that haste scroll. Yeah, I keep making haste, scro haste scrolls. Those are going to be great. Hearty meal's fine. Go ahead and rest. If you want to survive, you need to hone your self-control. I can offer you some advice. <laughs> a hell night teaching a paladin? Sounds like the start of a bad joke. <laughs> Man, I feel like Sila and Reggie are just going to be pulling. This is like playing tug of war with Barrett here. Let us press on. It's going to be interesting. Okay, let's go ahead outside. Wonder where Reggie is. He is. Oh, there he is. There's Demon Bane. Okay, so we'll head over there. Oh, Canabras Crusader. Hey, little one. They say you can do magic. An old silver-haired fighter si sizes Ember up skeptically. Apparently baffled to find such a young girl in the middle of the war. He's cradling his wounded arm, which has been hastily bandaged. Can you heal me? Of course. Ember whispers his spell and touches the bloody bandages. Thank you. That's so much better. The soldier rips off the blood-caked rags and strokes the healthy skin underneath them. How old are you? You're only a child. I have a granddaughter at home, just like you. Oh, little girl. 
How'd you end up here? What are you doing here in the thick of it with us? Ember gives him a lighthearted smile. I'm just like you. I came to the thick, so that the thick wouldn't come to the other kids, like your granddaughter. Well, I'll be. So little, and yet more courage, and yet more courage than some officers. The old man runs his rough hand over her. The old man runs his rough hand over her hair, and she smiles at him again. The crow on her shoulder rubs its head on his hand like a cat. Talking to you takes a load off my mind. Reckon it's not just my arm you healed. The soldier leaves, shaking his head pensively. Ember waves happily, then turns around and notices you. Hi. Shouldn't waste your time on simple soldiers. Looks like your words really got to him. Do they often come to you to help for do they often come to you for help like this? Ember shrugs. Demons keep hurting them. I keep healing them. But you know, it's surprising. So many soldiers come to me. They say I bring them comfort, that I give them strength. But I don't think but I don't do anything like that at all. I only talk to them nicely. I'm just a feather brained little girl. What if I said something wrong? What if what if something I say is wrong? Maybe I should keep quiet. But I can but I can tell that my words make them feel better. I guess I'm confused. Don't second guess yourself. You're helping all of us. The soldiers, our companions, and me. Your words really help people, but not everyone deserves help. Don't waste your powers on the unworthy. What could you say that could po will possibly be useful to them? You should really hold your tongue. No, don't second guess yourself. You think so? I think I'm wondering... I think I'm just wondering... I think I'm just wandering around silly... Oh my god. <laughs> I think I'm just wandering around saying silly things. She taps a scared, a scarred finger on her cheek and then breaks into a smile. All right. It must be true if you say so. Damn right. If I say it, it's true. Believe it. Believe it. Okay. Uh, I need to sell. There you go. Anything else we need to sell? Oh, yeah. I forgot we got this bastard sword of hope. That's kind of cool. I need to learn those recipes, too. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, where is it? Moss Pottage. There we go. Who was that had a level there? I thought Demon Bane had more levels to go. I don't know why it wasn't letting me level back there. That's weird. Uh, okay. He got devotion too. I didn't actually read what that is. Uh, let's see if we can't find it. Devotion. Animal companion gains a plus four morale bonus on will saves against en enchantment spell effects. Nice. Alright, so Reggie is over here. Is that Demon Bane? Yeah, that is Demon Bane. You can get a better look at that barding. It's pretty cool looking. Yeah. It'll help protect him. Oh, look at that Hell Knight. Give me some armor. Come on, guys. You guys got a spare suit? Regil stands with his hands behind his back. His favorite pose, it would seem. He seems submerged in thought, but gathers himself immediately as you approach. His pale yellow eyes examine you inquisitively. Knight Commander, it is good you found me. You found time to meet me. There's a matter of some urgency I must discuss with you. It was incredibly interesting, the power you and your companions received during the fight with the Great Garrison. And now my interest has been gratified. The power your companions received has passed on to me as well. It manifested after my usual evening reckoning. I believe I now present a true threat to the creatures and initiates of chaos. They imprisoned the imprisoned cultist we kept for certain observations. Experienced this firsthand. Regal's voice is unemotional, almost bored, but leaves no doubt as to the cultist's fate. Striking, isn't it? Divine intervention at a critical moment is rare, but not beyond imagining. But in this case, part of the power that you received through this intervention has passed to someone who joined you well after the fateful moment has passed. Yeah, it is kind of odd, isn't it? I believe this power is given to me and others for a good cause, to protect the miserable, this miserable world from the demons. Whatever the nature of this power, it will 
it will help us in our mission, and that's good. It seems to me like you're trying to find some pattern, even in this. What if a miracle is just a miracle? I hope that you remember who the source of your power is, and that you serve them loyally. I kind of like the, the evil option here. Yeah, I mean... I feel like Barrett and really most people wouldn't just say, like, like even if they're good aligned, they wouldn't just say the good thing just because it's the good thing all the time. Not, it's not always the case, but I feel like, you know, I mean, the character I'm trying to play is a little gray. Right? And I feel like he knows being a goody two-shoes with this guy is not going to earn his respect and loyalty. And he's the Knight Commander, right? He needs his followers and his soldiers to respect him. And he will say, he's not going to lie, right? He's not lying here when he says this. Even though he does believe this too. That, you know, this power is given to him to protect the world from the demons. And to protect the world from the demons, he has to crush the demons. Which he's okay with, because they're chaotic. But in this case, I hope that you remember who the source of that power is. And you serve them loyally is sort of... This is what he needs to tell Regal to ensure his loyalty, to make sure he's under his command. So I hope you remember who the source of your power is and that you serve them loyally. Hmm. By the same token, I hope you remember that the Hell Knights are not your toy soldiers. In any case, this is a shallow, this is shallow philosophizing. Philosophize, philosophizing? You must have some questions for me. Yeah, can I be a Hell Knight, please? Please? I forgot to ask you before. Uh, what can you tell me about the Hell Knights? I can tell you a great deal. However, the Order's recruiters would be better sources of a better source of information on such matters. Uh, did I really miss the opportunity to ask him if I could join? That would, that that's not fun. <laughs> uh, how are new Order members recruited? We accept that we accept as armager. We accept as armagers any we find worthy. But for the main test, the one that separates the strong from the weak, they must face down a devil summoned directly from hell. If they defeat the beast honestly, the armager becomes a rightful hell knight. If they lose, we simply forget their existence, like the world made an unfortunate mistake. Who do hell knights answer to? Only to the heads of the orders. In ca in my case, it's Lic Lector Lector Vesar Ontor Ontor, head of the Order of the God Claw. As a rule, the Hell Knights do not submit to to the jurisdiction at any state, of any state. The same is true of local laws. We are happy to help local governments bring order if we consider their requests lawful, and if those who ask are worthy. But we do not serve them and have every right to refuse their demands. So what do you value most? The law, and only the law. If you care so much about the law, how can you ignore the authority of the lawful rulers in the land, and the lands where you operate? We cannot call it law just because some foolish local prince thought it up on a council. Or a council of demented elders deem it wise, now can we? You see, one of the main principles of our brotherhood is that no is that no one, no one, is immune from per prosecution. A lawful ruler may be a criminal that possesses poses a threat to society. We must be able to punish them as well. Oh, so for the Hell Knights, it's not So one of the things about playing a lawful character I always thought was that you are beholden to the laws of the land you're in. But with Hell Knights, you're beholden to the laws of your order, it seems like, at all times. Makes sense. This is why Hell Knights only honor the measure and the chain, the doctrine shared by all our orders, and why Hell Knights serve only their officers and the aim of transforming this chaos-torn world and leading it to a brilliant and ordered future. We're the main bastion of order in Galarian, 
no matter how much some naysayers try to refute it. Thank you, I've learned everything I wanted to know. Expanding one's knowledge is a good deed, provided, of course, that this knowledge is useful. Ask if you have any, ask if you have any further questions. So we're going to exhaust this dialogue here. And what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to go back to an earlier save. Do that whole gargoyle fight again. Ask him that question and I'll cut it and put it in, uh, in into this video here. Uh, just to see what happens, right? Because I don't think he will. I don't know what will happen. Right, it could just be he tells us, you know, you can't do it right now, or I can't do it before you, or something like that. But if there's a chance that he does actually help us become a Hell Knight, you know, helps us summon a devil for us to defeat, uh, I, I kind of want to see if we can do that. So if we can't do it in any of these dialogue, dialogue options, that's what I'll do. May I ask you a few questions about yourself? Of course. Uh Oh, some even call us heretics. And that's a shame. If our teachings were adopted as the official doctrine of the Crusader movement, we would have won this war long ago. You know what? I want to go see what it says. So I'm going to I'm going to do that. I'm going to cut here. Thank you for speaking with me until next time. I'm going to cut here. And I'm going to do all of that again and see what happens. So I will see you guys in just a second. All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Uh, so I went through all the fight again. I actually lowered difficulty to story and uh, just to make it faster. And oh, my God, we just like blew through that fight. It's insane how much of a difference that makes. Uh, but we put the difficulty back up and we're back here now. So we're going to see. We're going to ask this, and there's also something else we forgot to do here. There's a little uh, mobility check thing over here, so we're going to try that too. Um, so I never formally joined the orders, but I would like to become an official Hell Knight. Regal nods curtly. Many formalities were not observed, the key one being that you have never undergone the test. But I will file the appropriate request. I expect the orders will consider it and send their response through the official channels. Okay, that's about what I expected might happen, but I just wanted to see what that was. Uh, but the request has been sent, so we're going to become a Hell Knight, damn it. Alright, so let's cut this out and we'll get to the mobility check. Okay, we just failed the mobility check to jump down here. Uh, that's why everybody took some damage. Uh, oh, there's a Sun, Sun Sword Crusader here. And what is this? The skeleton of a man wearing armor from the time of the First Crusade. It's holding it's holding the skeleton of a child with strange proportions and animal paws instead of its right arm and legs. So a mongrel. And a ring of protection plus two. Wow, it's a good thing we came down here, huh? Okay. A Sunrise Sword Crusader. We're still alive. Praised be Saren Ray. Oh, you're, you're just going to sit down here, huh? Okay. Okay, so that's what was down here. A ring of protection plus two. Let me go ahead and put that on Baron. 34 AC. Man, he is a monster. I'll put this one on Camellia. She's got 26. That's not bad. Okay, and that's going to be it. We're going to cut back to where we originally cut from when we were talking to Reggie. And I'll see you guys there. Okay, and we're back. To talking to Reggie. Um, yeah, I don't, I won't usually reload anything, but that conversation I feel like was just such a, I know we didn't end up getting much from it, but that conversation felt like it needed to be done for, for Barrett's character, like it would have been done. Um, so yeah, we did go back and do that. Uh, so now we can talk and uh, without, with a clean conscience that we uh, exhausted all the conversation options that we could have exhausted. So, Regil, what brought you to Mendev? The demonic threat, of course, and the glaring inefficiency of the local command. 
I do not know if you are aware of this, but the Hell Knights owe their existence to the Demon Lords to a certain extent. Our First Order appeared in response to Sefkish's, Sefkish's cult in Cheliax. The chaos they wrecked could not fail to breed strict opposition. I imagine Barrett would know about that. Those first knights were able to burn out the pestilence and crush the cult once and for all. I see no reason for the Hell Knights to, of today not to do the same to the tentacles of the, the tentacles the world wound is spreading. Without question, this task is far more difficult than anything we've encountered before, but it must be done to preserve world order. All the more, re all the more so, all the more so, given that Queen Golfrey and her commanders are apparently not up to the task. The motives of your list sound rather impersonal. Don't you have any other reasons for joining the Crusade? I mean, it's the same reason you joined, Barrett, but we'll ask it. Impersonality is a fine quality, is a fine quality for a Hell Knight, and for the rest of the world as well. Personal motives, strong emotions. They are weaknesses that your enemy will use against you. I am an effective officer with years of experience, or years of service. The demonic invasion of Galarian obviously demands the most qualified response. That is why I am here. It's simple. You're rather skeptical, skeptical about Queen Galfrey. If my memory does not fail me, the current crusade is called the Fifth. The Fifth Crusade. And with all of the support the Church of Iomide and multiple other allies provided Golfrey. No progress has been made in resolving the crisis of the world wound. The best they could manage was to create a chain of ward stones, and even they turned out to be in inadequate. I suppose that should be reason enough for my skepticism. He's not wrong. Iomide's church frowns upon the God Claw's followers. Some even call us heretics. And that's a shame. If our teachings were adopted as the official doctrine of the Crusader movement, we would have won this war long ago. I am in total agreement. The entire history of the Crusades proves that all the confusion and dysfunction within the Crusader army caused no less harm to it than the demon's attacks. Alas, the Church of Iomade is not inclined to make concessions. Our doctrine is not beneficial to them. They would rather destroy all of Mendev than relinquish even an ounce of power. Forgive me for asking a personal question. But your hair is going grey and your skin is rather pale. It's the bleaching, right? So yeah, I think we've talked about the bleaching briefly before. But the bleaching is the name given to the physical decolor decolorization and aging of a gnome. And is caused by a lack of exposure to new and exciting experiences. This bleaching of color is accompanied by a psychological decline first into depression and apathy and eventually into madness and death. Gnome, Gnome's efforts to fend off the bleaching only serves to fuel their their racial curiosity and whimsy, giving them, giving them a somewhat manic edge. Some claim that the bleaching is a result of the gnomes leaving the first world thousands of years ago. The few gnomes who survived the bleaching develop enig enigmatic wisdom and a connection to the natural world, earning them the name Bleachlings. Yeah, there's actually a... Uh, quite a bit of uh, information about the bleaching in the first Pathfinder game. I don't know if this game will go as deep into it, but uh, yeah, it's there if you guys are interested in it. Um, yeah, of course it's the bleaching. Rachel shrugs indifferently. Are you doing anything to fight the bleaching? What do other races do to fight the old age? Rachel allows himself a brief smirk. I know what made you ask this question. My kin have earned a certain reputation for their vain attempts to stave off the inevitable. Luckily, the rest of the world not all for the rest of, luckily for the rest of the world, not all gnomes are prepared to spread chaos with their reckless escapades. There are some among us who accept the nat the natural order of things. The bleaching has no effect on my ability to carry out my duties, and therefore it has no how should I put it? personal meaning for me. Do you have any family or friends? I've never wondered. I've never wondered at the fate of the former, and never had interest in the latter. If you allow me one piece of advice, Commander, never put too much stock in so-called friendship or camaraderie. Any bonds based on simple affection or tempor are temporary and unreliable. Half of your smiling companions certainly consider you consider you their friend for the present, but they will break. 
They, but they will break and betray you the moment you do anything that troubles their happy expectations. Place greater value on respect based on a rational evaluation of your commander's merit, companion's merits. I deeply respected my mentor, who trained me to join the hell, ranks of the Hell Knights. I respected her so much that I killed her with my own hands when I discovered that she'd betrayed the Order's ideals and was intending to leave our ranks. It would have been more proper to inform the command and await the formal trial, but on the other hand, that would have injured the morale of our young recruits. They should, they should not see manifestations of weakness in our seasoned knights. Regal cringes. Yeah, I think that's where we're going to differ, my man. You have only... You have openly shown your distrust of the Crusader command. Why then have you decided to join me? Do not misread my behavior as distrust of you personally. Like every Hell Knight, I watch everyone closely, searching for signs of weakness and sin. Everyone, including myself. Regal speaks the last words pointedly. Indeed, Regal Der Derringe is first on my list of suspects. I observe him daily, marking every fault, every hesitation, every weakness, and I prepare the proper punishment. So it has been and will be. As for your second question, I suppose we may, we may be useful to each other. You and your army are a new power in the crusade. I rate all the old powers as quite ineffective. I have yet to rate your own efforts, but early indications are positive. That means you may count on my help for now. I like the way you think. Strict on yourself and rational towards others. Yeah. Yeah. Where they differ is the uh, the evil aspect, I believe. Um, where he will... You know, he's much more like Horan. Where he will... If he sees something wrong, he will destroy it even without any hard evidence. Barad will not destroy it unless he has the hard evidence. But if he does have the hard evidence, he will not hesitate to destroy it like the, like the necromancer. I like the way you think. Strict on yourself and rational towards others. This only confirms my initial assessment. I'm glad to hear it, Commander. Regal bends a little in a polite half-bow. Thank you for your answers. Do you have a plan or strategy for the war against the demons? A spark flashes in Regal's eyes. I have a clear idea of the forces I shall require to wage effective war against the world wound. Currently, I do not possess them, but I know what steps I must take. We must amass and fortify, gather scouting information, resolve certain problems of an organizational nature. Once the problem of Dresden is solved, I shall direct some of my knights to prepare an outpost for the party. We have already scouted a suitable location, the ruins of an old shrine, which will hold the remnants of an ancient which, hold, which still holds the remnants of an ancient power and is thus a lure for demons, an excellent foothold for honing our skills and studying the enemy. This, that is my next goal. Thank you for speaking with me. Until next time. Okay, so we're done talking with him. And uh, I believe we're done speaking to anybody here. Yeah, I don't think we need to talk to anybody else. Well, hold on. Let's go back up here, see if the, uh, these Hell Knights have anything to say to me. We have to teach these snot noses from Mendev every everything. It's good to be in the army. You don't need to think, just fight. Oh, and here are the, all uh, the armagers. How's it going, buddy? Yeah. We can't talk to them. Neat. I'm glad we have the Hell Knights on our side. This is going to be fun. All right. Area exit. So who are we going to take with us? I think it's time. Sila, I'm leaving you behind. We're going to take Reggie with us. Um. Hmm. Do we want to take Reggie and Sila with us? So if we do that, we do need a healer. Oh man, this is getting really hard to choose people. We still didn't get to use Phantasmal Killer. So I want to bring the you. As for our healer. Let's bring 
Darren. And for our last person, Sasio. And we're actually going to reorganize this a bit. So we're going to go like that. Okay, this is going to be our party for now. And we're going to start headed towards uh, the, the one village, Chili Creek or something. Yeah, Chili Creek. We're going to start heading up there. And I know we might be wasting time. We should be probably going straight to Dresden. Hmm, I am a little worried that we might be wasting time doing this. But I don't want to miss anything either. I don't know. This is tough. It's always hard. We have these, uh, these things to decide. But we're going to send our Crusader army up. fight this demon army. It's a level 3 army, I think. So this could be a pretty tough fight here. Let's go ahead and see. What is that? Oh, these are elements. Oh, boy. Primals, huh? Okay. I'm gonna shoot that, and we're gonna come up here. Fire. Or strike. Good. And we'll come here and strike. Good. Ooh, that was a lot of damage. I'll go ahead and we're going to need to do this. Give us some extra power here. There we go. You're going to move. Oh, you can't. Why can't I move farther? Oh, I think that thing messes our movement speed up. I believe so. Ow. Okay, they're taking a lot of damage from the fire elemental. Try and take him out. Good, good hit there. Good. Fire Elemental's gone. And go ahead and heal. Alright. That wasn't bad. Good, they're going after the soldiers now. It's better. Uh, step over here. Alright, he can't move and attack. I forgot about that. After the Water Elemental. Okay. So I'm thinking, as I'm doing this fight, we might end up, I might be end up, like, uh, cutting out a lot of these fights. Not entirely. I mean, I still want to show, you know, that they happened. But something like that gargoyle fight that we had in the last episode, I'll probably be cutting that one out for sure. Or editing it down so it doesn't take up so much time. Because I feel like these are going to take up a little bit of time. Can we get rid of this guy? This guy's got a lot of health. Okay. Still doing alright. Let's go ahead and use this. There we go. The water elemental is going down. Ooh, big damage. The water elemental is almost down. That should... Oh, I thought that was going to take him out. This should take him out. Or not. This should take him out. Or not. <laughs> okay, we need to start healing, though. There we go. Good. And go ahead and heal yourself. Get some soldiers back. And keep doing this. Gotta remember to do that every round. Otherwise, we're just wasting time. Oh, two shots. Good. There we go, and you're going to heal them for this round. There we go. Do it again. Okay, he's almost dead. Oop, didn't mean to move. This is hopefully going to be the last round, although we forgot to do our thing, and I keep moving. I don't really like how easy it is to click somewhere and move them. Like, you gotta be really precise with where you're attacking at. Oh, he had another... Damn it. Terrible. Come on. Put him out of his misery. Please. Okay. 
There we go. Another victory for the army. Okay, and we recovered everybody. Good. She's almost level three. I wonder how many, uh, we should probably look at our finite. Oop. After pacifying the elementals, the soldiers found the remains of a cultist sorcerer in the middle of a broken summoning circle. Despite his apparent outstanding magical powers, power, he was unable to control the raging spirits he had brought into existence. His still fingers were still cl clinching the horrendous flail he used as a weapon. Treasure found. Tyranny of Mind. A heavy flail. This plus two heavy flail can be safely wielded only by non-good characters. Each time the wielder of this weapon lands a critical hit, the enemy has to pass a, wiz a will save of 13 and become affected with the equivalent of the dominate person spell for one round. Damn. If a good character wields this weapon, they become permanently confused even after they unequip it. Holy crap. This effect can be removed by remove curse spell dc 15 wow okay so we've cleared the way to chili creek let's go back down i don't know if we actually have to clear the way i just think it makes sense that we do we're gonna leave that demon army alone and move this back down to camp and start heading it's going to start heading up towards dresden which is that way actually i think we might need to clear this out too uh that army is actually not that strong. Uh, we can't recruit yet, can we? Oh, we can recruit. And we can hire a mercenary. Ooh. Okay, so we can recruit again. So we're going to hire everybody. Good. And these guys... So we can hire the Hell Knights for 3,800 finance points. That's kind of a lot. Do we want to do that? Maybe not right now. Search for new units. Huh. Wait, what is this? Wait, do we have 20,000 finance points? What is... Is this pulling from that, or... No, it pulled from that. I don't know what this is. Oh, that's how many in total they cost? I'm unsure. But we bought 10 Hell Knights. So what we're going to do is we're going to split this army. We're going to send the Hell Knights out. Um, you guys all stay here. Well. Hmm, how do we want to do this? Let's just make this a whole new army here. Uh, was it shift click? Yeah. And leave that army there. So this is a new army here. So the third army. Oh, we have Hell Knights here too. I see. We're going to have them wait at camp here. The fourth army is down here. And the fifth army is also up here at camp. Okay. Okay. So the fourth army we're going to send up here to camp they won't make it in time but they'll join up with the ten hell knights and that'll be really our next big army okay and that's it for the army stuff for this episode so we have a little bit of time left so let's go ahead switch here and we're going to start heading up to chili creek visit Jerno in chili creek, chili creek. Uh, so head up there. I'll take 12 hours. Keep going. Alright, Chili Creek. Well, let's see what it says here. A sleepy fishing village outside the world wound. A quiet place on the bank of a lazy river where nothing interesting seems to have happened since its founding day. Enter. Okay. Let's see what's going on here. Presumably something dangerous. I doubt it's just a, a peaceful village anymore. Okay, you guys get on your horses. 
Your orders, Commander. He's got a great voice. I love it. All right, step up. Okay, so we need to change formations here. Um, something like that instead. So let's have have it like this. Have the horses a little further up. Yeah, that looks good. Can we uh, make Barrett go a little further? Yeah. Have him be a little bit higher up. There we go. Okay, let's take a look at the map. Alright. Looks looks peaceful to me. Oh, there's Juno. Hey, buddy. Juno walks thoughtfully around the grove. He pauses in front of a few trees, lingering there for some time. He seems to be examining something carefully. At the sound of your footsteps, he turns around abruptly, but the anxious expression on his face quickly gives way to an amiable smile. Commander, it's so good to see you. It seems you found time to visit our quiet backwater after all. I could be mistaken, but it looked like you were frightened by my arrival. Why were you looking at those trees? How do you like living in the village? I assume you just got here relatively recently. It's so quiet here. What makes you forget? War makes you forget what peace feels like. What do the locals think of Everastal? Well then, will you show me around the village? I could be mistaken, but it looked like you were frightened by my arrival. Oh no, you, you startled me, that's all. It's my overactive imagination. I still can't get used to living in a, such a small village. The town where I grew up was a good deal larger, and it was located near a trade route. So there were always lots of new faces, and plenty of people bustling around. Here, though, it's different. The moment you step outside the village, you, you're all alone. You can walk for miles in any direction, with only the birds and animals for company. This is, of course, the way a rassle teaches us to live. But truth be told, it still makes me feel somewhat uncomfortable. Why were you looking at those trees? See for yourself. He points to one of the branches. And among the leaves, you notice a small doll made of grass and seaweed, tied with blue ribbon. I keep finding them here in the, gro here in the grove. I think it's some kind of local ritual. I've asked the villagers to tell me what it means, but they won't give me an answer. I just don't understand the reason for all the all the secrecy. Oh no, that's not good. It's never a good sign when a small village has a secret like that. How do you like living in the village? I'm getting used to the way of things. I still get the occasional sidelong glance from the locals, but that's not surprising. After all, I'm just some stranger who decided to show up without an invitation and settle down in the village. But the church warned us about this. Such caution is to be expected at first. I just, I just had to do my best to earn their trust. I heal, I purify the water, I give blessings. Sooner or later, they will accept me as one of their, as one of their own. It's so quiet here. War makes you forget the, forget what peace feels like. I understand. My time in Canabras gave me a small taste of war. I only had to live through it for a few days, but I know the horrors I witnessed. But I know the horrors I witnessed will haunt my nightmares for years to come. I cannot imagine how hard it is for those like yourself, soldiers who have give, who have given their lives to their to this cause. The priest places a hand on his heart. You have chosen to fight there. In order to protect our peaceful and quiet life here. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart. What do the locals think of Erastal? They're indifferent. They are pragmatic people, you know. They don't give... They don't have time for theology. If old Deadeye him, helps them survive, that's good enough for them. You know... Some priests get overzealous with sermons. They demand that people pray, observe all rituals, make sacrifices. And then those priests, all holy and pious, are surprised when locals kick them out of their village, right into the nearest ditch. The priest laughs. I was taught differently. First, you have to prove your worth. You have to show them why you and your deity are useful. It's only after they've begun to trust you and start asking questions about your faith that you can really share your belief. Then you can tell them all about Old Deadeye and his teachings. Well then, will you show me around the village? Of course. Let's go. 
You get to meet the locals, you see. You'll get to meet the locals, see how we live. Maybe you'll even manage to get some peace and quiet. A temporary respite from the hardships of war. Or something bad is going to happen. What are you doing, Juno? Juno? Is this some sort of local ritual? Juno, stop it! A straw doll, claw... A straw doll, clad in a small, skillfully embroidered light blue dress, is tied to the trunk of the tree. There's another one over here. Three old dolls hang from the branches. Their grass and seaweed bodies are slowly rotting away. Alright, let's head in. I will guide us. Uh, is it across here? Oh, no, 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 no! Oh, we almost killed the elk on accident. Uh, how do we get to this village? I see, uh, what is this? Some sort of, oh, it's a dire wolf. Well, that's worrying. Is it up the river here? A piece of gray ribbon hangs from the branches. Uh, village, where are you? This kind of looks like a path. What a beast! We've got you now. Watch out for those huge teeth. Don't let them catch you. That's a hydra. We'll aim for her throat and belly. Fewer scales there. Don't be afraid, everyone. We fought one bigger than this. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I had toggled off uh, turn base when I was redoing that uh, gargoyle fight to make it faster. Okay, so here we go. You're up first, buddy. Go ahead and charge on in. This is a Hydra, right? Yeah. Let's go ahead and check out its, uh, its uh, stuff. There we go. So it's got fast healing. And, but it's, it is, but it's exhausted. That's good. It's flat-footed as well right now. It's a magical beast. Immune to trip. Okay. Go ahead and charge in. There we go. Good damage right away. Ninio, you're gonna... Hit it with a blind. Uh, all right, cool. So it should be blinded, or at least one of its heads. I don't know if if that uh needs to be hit like five times or something. Get over there, and you'll hit. Villager taking some damage, but it is blind, so should be missing more often. Who's this guy? Markel. All right, Darren. I'm gonna hit it with a crossbow bolt. Get rid of that. Out of my sight. Good. Because you know, blessed everybody. Thank you. And damn it, you got in our way, Reggie. That was my bad. I shouldn't have done that with Reggie. Critical hit with Barrett. Beautifully done. Marco, that'll teach you to mess with us. The man with green eyes. A man with green eyes. The broad shoulders of a swimmer. In the calloused hands of a fisherman, shakes his fist at the beast's motionless carcass. Something's, something's got them all worked up. That's the second time they've crawled out this month. So let him come, says Melis Melissa. A woman, her eyes the same shade of green as the fisherman, smiles at you. It's not the first time, and it won't be the last. But what's it matter? They can't hurt us, and we can, and we can sure use their hides to make lots of waterproof cloak, coats and cloaks. Juno, Markle, Melissa, I'd like to introduce you to someone. This is Baron, the commander of the crusade. He's the one I told you about. Ah, a real hero in our black in our backwater. It's so nice of, of you to drop by. We've never had anyone so important come to visit. Heroic acts are important, but sometimes it's good to leave the front lines and talk to ordinary people, living ordinary lives. Anyway, welcome to Chili Creek. Okay, these guys don't seem so bad. I thought they were going to be some, like, weird, sort of creepy, ritualist cult sort of thing going on. 
Oh, stop it. I'm not someone important. I'm not some important guest, just a mortal like yourself. No, I'm a god. Bow to me, peasants. Hydras are usually far more dangerous. That beast was not at its full strength. Two of you look very much alike. I assume you're related. You two looked you two looked very confident when you were giving orders to the other villagers during the fight. Are you in charge here? What are those grass dolls that hang on the trees that <laughs> I ask him that and they just tell me straight up and Juno's just like, What the hell? I've been asking you for weeks. How's life in the village now that you're now that you've got a priest? The world wound is not far away. Have you ever been attacked by demons? Evil attack. I don't like either of you. Die. Um, hydras are usually far more dangerous. That beast was not at its full strength. I can tell you have an eye for such things, says Markle. Melissa. Well, of course he does. He's the commander of the crusade. He probably could have. He probably could have told you all, all that with his eyes shut. Melissa smiles at you. It's all thanks to our mother. I see real. She takes care of her children. Won't let anyone hurt them. She fills our nest nets with fish and drives away the monsters. I see real. Markle. That's right. And if she doesn't drive the beasts away, she'll weaken them so we can kill them and harvest their hides. Who's that? She's right here. Markle nods towards the river. Did you think this was Selen? No. It'd take you half a day of rowing before you reach that river. It's big, to be sure, and very important. The Selen flows through at least a dozen countries. But where but where would uh, the Great Selen be if it wasn't fed by thousands of little streams and creeks, such as our dear icy rill? Okay, so they worship the, the river. Journal. The people of Chili Creek hold the river in great reverence. The priest's observation is a matter of fact. But you notice his voice sounds a bit strained. Yeah. How can we not? Our whole lives are built around the river. From the wedding from the wedding wreath wreath we send down its streams to the funeral boats that float away that floats away on the waters when the time comes. Our mother, Icy Will, feeds us, gives us water, protects us. With a kind smile, Marco casts a sidelong glance at its at the frowning priests. The gods are far away, but our Icy Will is right here, so we treat her with respect. The two of you look very much alike. I assume you're related. Right you are. Marco ruffles Melissa's hair. She laughs and tweaks his nose. She's my little sister. Takes after our granny. May her memory fa may her memory never fade. She was always restless. Couldn't sit still. And Melissa, Melissa is just the same. She's always up to something. Uh, and you took after our grandpa. May the river silt, may the river silt be his feather bed. You're as brave as, he, brave as he was, and just as stubborn. You two looked very confident when you were giving orders to the villagers during the fight. You two in charge? Well, how should I put this? Our village is so small is too small for anyone to be in charge. We just happen to know a thing or two about using a weapon. So if some nasty creature comes crawling out of the river, we, we give the orders. But when it comes to fishing or fixing nets, we'll be the ones following orders. We're not an army, and there's no officers here. We all live together, solve our problems together, and serve the icy reel together. Although, truth be told, that was Melissa that said it, now it's Markle. Uh, although, truth be told, it's only been in the last few years that people have really started listening to us. Before that, villagers, villagers kept to themselves. No one wanted to go poking their nose into anyone else's business. When we first came up with the idea to start trading on the river, the other villagers stubbornly dug in their heels, but after money and goods began to flow into the village, they changed their minds. Yep, that'll do it. Melissa. Yes, the village the village has been growing. We're getting to see all sorts of things we have we had never we had only ever heard about before. The year before last we had a fair, and people came all the way from Canapras to attend. Wow, that's actually really big. Then a priest came, and we'd never and we'd never seen one of those before in these parts. And now who would have thought the commander of the crusade has decided to pay us a visit? Yeah, you guys are doing prospering quite well. No wonder they worship the river. That's probably where all the goods come from, too. Uh, what are those grass dolls that hang from the trees in the grove? A shadow passes over Markle's face, and he looks away. 
There's nothing much to tell, really. An old local custom. Melissa. It's just a ritual, Melissa adds in a low voice. No one seems willing to share any further details with you. Hmm. How's life in the village now that you've got a priest? Not much has changed, Markle shrugs and smiles amiably. He's a good lad. He does some healing, never bothers us with sermons. Why, he's even learned to fish. He's even learning to fish in his spare time. Melissa. He also knows a lot of songs, and when he sings, it makes you want to sit and listen. Melissa smiles arch, arch, archly at the priest, and he blushes. Aww. The world wound is not far away. Have you ever been attacked by demons? No, we've never seen any. Our mother, Icy Will, keeps us safe. She would never let such abominations get near us. Interesting. Uh, I'm... I'm not going to say this. <laughs> I have to go? Or do I have to say it? I have to go. Back to the front. Melissa shakes her head sadly. I can't even imagine the nightmarish creatures you have to face. You have to fight there. Markle. Have a safe journey and a swift victory. Huh? Mission complete? Okay. Uh, well, we're going to skin this for you guys. Or can I have the eyeballs at least? Thanks. We're not going to loot their stuff. It's a small village, so I don't really feel like uh, we should do that. Uh, is Juno still here? Juno? I guess he just walked away. There's a village up here. Uh, yep, here's the village. It's got some walls. We really, I just want to see if they have a shop. There's Marco and Melissa. Look, the commander's here. Welcome back. I actually never really left. Um, we've already asked this. We've already asked this. Oh, wait, is this new? Yeah, not much has changed. Uh, he's even learning to fish in his spare time. He's a good man. He came all this way to live with us. This is Melissa split up talking. He's a good man. He came all this way to live with us, even though he had never met us before. His religious beliefs, well, they're his own business. But life in the village became a lot a lot more fun after he arrived, and that's all that really matters. He's a good singer, and he knows a lot of stories. All the best ones are about you, actually, and how you cleverly defeated all the demons in Canabras. Oh, you know, you shouldn't have. Markle. He sings you his little songs, and you hang on his every words. Markle pretends to scowl as he teases his little sister. He's a good man, no question. But still, he's not one of us. You'd better, you'd be better off finding yourself someone from the village instead, instead of spending all your time with him boating up and down the river. Melissa, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody asked you. Melissa sticks out her tongue. At Markle. Uh, were you talking about the grass dolls? Local custom, it's just a ritual, okay. Uh, ever been attacked by demons? Nope. Uh, when crusaders are near the world boon, they often experience nightmares when they sleep. Do you have any troubles with nightmares here? Markle. Don't know what you're talking about, if I'm honest. I sleep like a dead man. Nothing to complain about. Do you worship any deities here? Faith, religion, deities? With all due respect to Juno, no one, no one out here has time for such things. Maybe people in the city can go around saying prayers and listening to sermons. But in, the backwater, but in a backwater place like this, we're just doing what we can to survive. There's nothing. There's only one provider and protector for us. Our mother, Icy Rill. Marco nods towards the river. Yeah, the river doesn't care about prayers or sacrifices. And if Icy Rill wants something in exchange for her help, she just takes it without asking. Melissa stares pensively at a piece of driftwood as, it carries, as it's carried away by the current. How are things going in the village? Eh, not much happening in the village. I'm sure you have a lot going on and stuff is always happening in the cities and on the front lines. But things are pretty quiet out here. But let's see. What's the latest news from our little village? Well, we went fishing and caught some rough. Some rough. They were big too. Nice and plump. Fat as piglets, I tell you. What else? Weevils. Weevils have eaten through our carrots. They gobbled up everything. Down to the last stalk. Then the other day, old, Ber old Breg went up to fix his roof and took a hard fall. If it, if it hadn't been for Junot and his prayers, he'd he'd have kicked the bucket by now. No doubt about that. Damn. 
It's a good thing he's here then. Maybe you must think it's ridiculous to call any of this news. Also, Janelle you know, just is just downright wonderful, says Melissa. I don't know. Maybe his prayers are working, or maybe he he's just has a lucky touch. But whenever he but whenever he blesses me, I always catch a boatload of fish. Also, he sings like a Marco enough already, Marco frowns. You know this, you know that. It's all I ever hear you talk about. I have to go. Gotta be careful not to accidentally click six there. <laughs> Safe travels. May you defeat all your enemies. And don't forget, you're always welcome here. Melissa. Look, the commander's here. Welcome back. Uh, same things. Okay. Alright. Let's see here. Got some villagers. Here's the river. I just want to find out where Juno is before we uh, end the episode. Nice little village here. They say demons in the world in the wound are on the move again. Something about something's about to happen. That's not good. If something happens, it'll be there, not here. Things stay quiet around here, thanks to the river, and that's how it should be. Uh, I got a bad feeling. Something bad's gonna happen, and they're gonna blame Juno. I don't know when it's going to happen, but it's definitely going to happen eventually. Where is Juno at? Maybe something bad already has happened to him. Juno? Oh, there he is. I'm blind. This is the way we live out here. We're not wealthy, but things are at least relatively quiet. Uh, why were you examining those trees? Uh, yeah, they brought us this. How do you like living in the village? You used to weigh things here and later. Yeah, we've already asked that. So quiet here. I understand. Yeah. Locals think of Aris Rastal. Yeah. Uh, yeah, when the Crusaders are near the world wound, they often experience nightmares when they sleep. Do you have any trouble with nightmares here? No troubles with the nightmares here. The village is located on the outskirts of the world wound, so perhaps that's why? I dislike you, die! Jeez. Here, I'll still help you. Okay, so a nice little village. I don't see any merchants. Anywhere. That's okay. Uh, I presume, or I assume we're gonna be coming back here again uh, when Jerno needs help. But until then, Godspeed. we are done with uh, Chili Creek. And that's going to be it for this episode, guys. I hope you have enjoyed it. And uh, I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one. Until then, hope you guys have a wonderful day, and I will catch you later.